I know you're thinking, oh, geez, not another Ocean Gate Titan video by this guy. He doesn't know when to shut up about it. This is old news, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there's a reason why airplane crash investigations take so long. There's a lot of evidence and stuff to go through before you can come to any conclusions. So if you're new to the channel, I did a whole series of videos on the Ocean Gate Titan where I systematically went through each aspect of the entire design so I could come to my own conclusions about its strengths and weaknesses and all of the possible failure modes, the major one being that pesky carbon fiber cylinder. This got me to thinking, just how does one design a deep submergence vehicle? Is it do it like James Cameron says to do it? Is there some kind of code or a set of laws? Once again, I'm keeping the morals, ethics, and or legalities separated from this and just sticking to the technical aspects. Okay, so who or what regulates how a submersible should be made? ASME, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. They have a publication called Safety Standards for Pressure Vessels for Human Occupancy. This would be our starting point. This 196-page document outlines all of the basics, everything from how to calculate hole thickness to how to design a viewport. It tells you what is allowed and what is not allowed, things like no cast iron, certain types of steel alloys, no rivets, and so on. As far as I can tell, carbon fiber is not even on the radar here. There is another 796-page ASME publication called Section 8 Rules for Construction of Pressure, Pressure Vessels, which goes over in great detail all of the different types of materials which can be used, how they must be constructed, welded, tested, and so on. The materials referred to are various types of steels and or non-ferrous metals. Here also, carbon fiber appears to not even be on the radar. As far as I can tell, OceanGate tried to comply with ASME standards where they could, such as with the titanium parts, but when it comes to the carbon fiber cylinder, there are no rules. This is the conundrum which Rush faced. I know you're going to tell me he should have just used titanium. Then he would have had a big heavy sub with a lot of syntactic foam that could not accommodate five people. Keep in mind that the Titan was essentially the steel hulled Cyclops on steroids. It also had a five-person capacity, but it could only dive to 500 meters. This is another area where I feel Stockton Rush is misunderstood and is interpreted as being full of hubris and so on, but he really was in uncharted waters when it comes to the use of carbon fiber. Basically, there are currently no rules, that, as far as I can tell, when it comes to the use of carbon fiber in a submersible. It would probably be a five to seven year process just to get to the point where some kind of standards could be formulated for that if it's not just outright disallowed. So if there are no standards, how are you supposed to build and test it? Well, you do your own testing and rely on a third party with more expertise than you to build it. I know next you're going to want to tell me that, well, it needed to be certified, but what professional engineer is going to certify something for which there are no standards? Certifying it means that they take on legal responsibility. So in this regard, it's not really certifiable. Once again, Rush is on his own here. One thing to note is that ASME Division 8 lists graphite as an acceptable material, but this is not the same material as carbon fiber. The molecular structures are not the same. It appears that carbon fiber may be acceptable per section UG10, but not without a lot of testing and certifications, which would be costly and time consuming. And a professional engineer would also have to be comfortable signing off on it as well. I suspect that the next edition of safety standards for pressure vessels for human occupancy will have some additions regarding carbon fiber, which will probably be under the disallowed material sections. I don't think ASME will seriously entertain the idea of carbon fiber after what happened to the Titan. So who actually certifies a deep submergence vehicle? Well, one avenue would be to pay the American Bureau of Shipping to certify it for you. I'm fairly certain that they would just be using all of the applicable ASME guidelines in their certification process. It's probably also likely that they would not certify a carbon fiber hole either. I'll leave you with this. Stockton said in a July 2022 interview with David Pogue that, 
quote, a lot of the submersible industry is run by pressure vessels for human occupancy standards, which acts like a standards body, but it's not a standards body. It's a volunteer group that's come up with some rules, unquote. Technically, that is true. It's not a standards body such as ANSI. If Rush wasn't operating in international waters, the requirements would have been much different. But Ocean Gate was actually based in the Bahamas, and so any legal matters are subject to whatever laws are in place there. This is what it says on the waiver that mission specialists would sign before going on a dive. This might seem shady and deceptive, but that is how their business was set up and is the reason why they could use an uncertified submersible in their operations. It was also made clear that they would be boarding an experimental vessel, and death is mentioned no less than eight times, along with the fact that the Titan was not approved and or certified by any governing agencies. 